Higuain's come a long way. It's a brilliant run. It's off the bar. Yo, my man. Are you good? <clears throat> yep, thanks for the catch, bro. All good. The hell was that? Gonzalo Higuain. If you ever need an example of how a few mistakes, albeit high-profile mistakes, can make everyone forget just how much of a force a player is, look no further than Al Pipita himself. When speaking to very many people about Higuain, it's not uncommon to hear all sorts of slanderous remarks about his finishing in high-profile scenarios, his decision-making, and even his weight. Justified or not, we'll make our decision in a bit. But let's not forget that the man once outscored Cristiano Ronaldo at Madrid while they were both at the club, shares the record for the most goals scored in a single Serie A season, and has scored over 100 goals in both La Liga and Serie A. To any sensible person, this guy is clearly no joke. However, according to some, the sad truth is that he is. Today, we'll be taking a look at the career of Alpipita to find out if he really deserves the hate or not. So with that being said, how good was Gonzalo Higuain really? Yo, yeah, what's up guys, I hope you're all doing well, strap in because we've got a goodie coming up. The case of Gonzalo Higuain is a rather peculiar one. Recently, in an interview with ESPN, he went on to talk about how he felt rather hard done by when Real Madrid continued to bring in firepower despite the fact that he was scoring 20 plus goals a season back in 2009. They brought in Cristiano Ronaldo, Ricardo Kaká and Karim Benzema and Higuain thought to himself, how many goals do I have to score? Although this was only part of his experience at a club that notoriously gives their best players a hard time, it's hard not to draw parallels from this quote with regards to his career as a whole. How many goals does he have to score? Despite putting up incredible numbers and achieving all that he has done, it seems that at almost every team he's played in, for both club and country, he's criticized far more than he's praised. Not always for the same reason though but we'll get into that in a bit. So with all of that being said, let's start things off from the very beginning. Born in 1987 in Brest, France, that's right, France, Higuain was born as the son of Jorge Higuain, a former professional footballer of Argentine descent. At the time of his birth, his father was plying his trade for Stade Brestois in the French top division. Although his father's stay in Brest was rather short-lived, the team was relegated and after spending only 10 months in France following young Gonzalo's birth, the Higuain family moved back to Argentina. And before you ask, no, Gonzalo Higuain does not speak French. Or at least he didn't when he was called up to the French national team back in 2006. This was of course before he declared for Argentina. Hmm, the more you know. Anyway, his father began playing for River Plate upon his return to Argentina, the same club that young Gonzalo Higuain began his own footballing journey. From about 1997 to 2005, Higuain spent his formative years in the Buenos Aires club before making his full debut for the first team towards the end of the 2004-05 season as a 17-year-old. As things progressed over the next two years, there was just something about him that made him stand out a tall, quick, strong number 9 with a more than decent scoring touch, as evidenced by the 13 goals and 35 appearances he scored for his first club. After scoring twice in the league against heated rivals Boca Juniors in October of 2006, former Argentine legend and then River Plate coach Daniel Passarella stated after the match that young Higuain was, and I quote, destined for stardom. He wasn't wrong. Only two months after that, Real Madrid came knocking. And after a 12 million euro fee at 19 years of age, Madrid was officially his new home. And only one month after that, he was a starter. The future was looking bright. Now officially a Madrid player, Higuain's story early on resembled one that isn't too unfamiliar to many. A young South American talent is scooped up by a European footballing giant and proceeds to not set the world alight immediately upon arrival. And so, the doubters began to grow. With Ronaldo Nazario, Ruud van Nistelrooy and Raul all still at the club when he arrived, he still had some time to come into his own. But with all three of these players being in their 30s, he didn't have a whole lot of it. In his first two seasons with Madrid, he managed to pick up two La Liga trophies but many still had their doubts. With just 10 goals in his first 44 La Liga appearances, the would-be successor to the highly scrutinized Los Blancos number no. 9 role wasn't winning many new fans. There was more to his game though. 
hence why he was continually selected. The strength, aerial prowess and holder play was there, the technical skill to exchange with his mates was there, the clever movement was there, all that was missing were the goals. And those came the following season. An injury to Ruud van Nistelrooy early in the 2008-09 season meant that for the first time at only 21, Higuain was, albeit momentarily, the leading man. With 22 goals and 9 assists in the league, I think it's fair to say he delivered on the early promise. However, despite proving that he can hang up top and effectively playing alongside Raul in attack that season, Madrid failed to retain the league title, losing us to Barca by 9 points. Pair that with an early exit from the Champions League and it's no surprise that newly re-elected Real Madrid president Florentino Perez pulled the trigger. Galacticos 2.0 just take a look at this 2009 summer transfer window. This is… this is sick. Perez really was playing FIFA in real life back then, wasn't he? I mean, he still is, but he was also doing it back then too. So with all the added firepower, you'd expect that our guy would take a back seat, right? Not quite. In his best return yet, he not only kept pace with newly brought in Cristiano Ronaldo, he outscored him. With 27 goals in the league versus Ronaldo's 26, he was clearly still a very important member of the team. And it's also important to note that Ronaldo was on penalty duty this season, scoring 4 of them. Now of course Ronaldo would go on to break all sorts of scoring records from this season onwards, but that's besides the point. Fast forward a couple years and despite suffering a nasty back injury that kept him on the sidelines for a good few months in early 2011, he came back strong and played a large role in helping Madrid back to league glory. 22 goals in 34 appearances was a more than adequate contribution to a 100 point winning campaign in the 2011-2012 season. Despite this season's success and Higuain's continued goal scoring form, there was always the sense that something wasn't right. Perhaps that things weren't so great on the inside. Following the arrivals of the likes of Ronaldo, Benzema and Kaká, many believed that Higuain was not part of Madrid's plans. Yet despite that, he continued to perform. One person that believed that was Gonzalo Higuain's own father, Jorge Higuain. In the past, he's noted on a few occasions that Florentino Perez simply did not like his son. He's even gone as far as saying that Perez doesn't like Argentines. Some pretty damning accusations. However, perhaps they're not so unfounded. If you've been paying attention to Real Madrid over the past 15 years or so, it shouldn't be news to you that Karim Benzema is one of Florentino Perez's favourite players. Maybe of all time. Couple that with the fact that Higuain was actually brought into the club by Madrid's former president Ramon Calderon and perhaps his father wasn't so far off. I guess it's all speculation. But we do know one thing for sure. Our man was not enjoying himself. No one has gifted me anything. I have had to fight for everything. I want to go somewhere where they really want me. The words of the subject of the day in the weeks leading up to his Real Madrid exit. After a relatively disappointing 2012-13 season, Pipa's seven year stint in Madrid had come to a close. So where to next? Well, as we all know, his next destination was also Napoli. His, his next destination was, was Napoli. <clears throat> After a 40 million euro fee, Napoli had a new number 9. Higuain had finally gotten the fresh start he needed, now playing for a team that truly did want him. With Edison Cavani leaving for Paris, some firepower was definitely needed. Now the certified main man in Naples, he got off to a decent start. A Coppa Italia trophy and 17 goals in the league in his first season. Up to this point, he had been through quite a bit in his career. Ups and downs, I mean, you know the deal. But things were about to get a whole lot worse. Like, like a lot. Seriously. In the lead up to the 2014 World Cup, Argentina had qualified top of their group with Higuain scoring a hefty 9 goals to help them along the way. And after a great tournament for Argentina, they found themselves in the final against international rivals Germany. Then this happened. Terrible back header into the path of Higuain who should have opened the scoring. Argentina lost by a goal to nil. The backlash was so bad on Higuain that he chose not to go out in public for some time following the final. The man even seriously considered retiring from the sport altogether. However, thanks to encouraging words from his mother, he soldiered on. The next season at Napoli, he improved upon his last campaign, scoring 18 this time. Although, unfortunately, the club finished just outside the Champions League spots. Just, just remember that for later. Anyway, back to Argentina and perhaps our guy would get a chance to redeem himself this time in the 2015 Copa America. 
After all, Argentina did make it to the final like they had done in the World Cup one year prior. And, well, this happened. El cruce de Medel, y nos salvamos. Oh, la pelota elevada por todo el Again, the backlash was real. Two major misses in two consecutive finals in two consecutive years. Surely this can't be life. In any case, he soldiered on once more and perhaps in spite of all the negativity, had the greatest season of his career. 36 goals in the league the most goals scored in a single Serie A season, a feat that's only been accomplished three times by Gino Rossetti in 1929, Gonzalo Higuain in 2016, and Ciro Immobile in 2020. And he was scoring all kinds of goals too, left foot, right foot, chips, overhead kicks, and only three penalties. At this point, Higuain was considered a son of Naples. The fans loved him. And Argentine hadn't made this much impact on the club since the heroics of the late great Diego Maradona. And what's more, he was only 10 goals short of Maradona's goal scoring record at Napoli by the end of that season. However, Napoli unfortunately finished in second and failed to win any silverware that year. Apparently, when Iguain signed, Napoli's president Aurelio De Laurentiis had promised him that they would do everything they could to be in the Champions League every year and on a domestic level that they would fight tooth and nail for the Scudetto, recruiting the top talent required to compete with tabletoppers Juventus. In the eyes of Higuain and his agent, his older brother Nicholas, these promises were never fulfilled. His dissatisfaction did make sense, I guess. He was a man in his prime and probably felt as though he needed silverware to commemorate his form. And so, Higuain was on the move once more. This time, his destination was awesome Juventus. His, his destination was, was Juventus. <clears throat> he made the switch to Turin after his release clause of 90 million euros was met by the Italian champions. This move was met with all kinds of outrage. The fans were outraged, the board was outraged, it was the ultimate treachery. This decision is full of betrayal and it even includes ingratitude. I never seriously thought he would leave, nor that he would cancel three years in Naples with just one throw of the sponge. The words of Napoli's president. Even Diego Maradona himself publicly let the world know how he felt about this move. When speaking on his reasons for making the switch, Higuain once said, I no longer had any kind of relationship with De Laurentiis. I can't be clearer than that. He didn't treat me well and we didn't have a relationship. I couldn't stand to be around him for another minute. I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't think they liked each other. It's just a hunch though, don't quote me on that. Before we move on, let's backtrack a little. Just prior to all of this going on, Argentina made it to yet another Copa America final in 2016. Again, against Chile. And... Nah, nah, you can't be serious. Three times. Nah, no, nah, no, nah, I don't believe you. I don't- Yeah, yeah, no, it's confirmed. This man is cursed. Anyway, after moving over to Juventus and missing yet another big chance in a major international final, for a moment, it seemed as though absolutely nobody was a fan of the guy. Napoli fans were showing their appreciation for him by printing his face on toilet rolls. And meanwhile, over at Juventus, he showed up to preseason overweight and was criticized by Juve fans and also mocked by everyone else. But try as they all did, the mockery and criticism did not faze him. It is better if you keep saying I'm fat, I'll continue to score goals. He said that after he scored on his Serie A debut with Juve. By the end of his first season, he netted 24 times in the league, picking up his first Scudetto as well as the Coppa Italia. The next season wasn't all that different. Slightly fewer goals for Pipa, but an identical trophy haul. However, it was from the following season onwards that things truly began to slow down. Loan spells to Chelsea and Milan, a return to Juve and more comments on his weight, and finally a trip over to the US to join Inter Miami towards the end of 2020. And if his words in a recent interview turn out to be true, he's on course for a sabbatical from football once his current contract is up in a year's time. Whether that means complete retirement or not, time will tell. So now with the knowledge of the trials and tribulations of the career and probably to some extent the life of Gonzalo Higuain, we're left with a few questions. Did Gonzalo Higuain deserve better treatment over his career? Was the hate justified? Well, let's recap. He was tossed aside by Real Madrid, 
he was loved and then hated by Napoli and the citizens of Naples, he was absolutely torn to shreds by everyone following his disappointing finals displays with Argentina, and finally he was continuously mocked before even playing a Serie A game for Juventus and more or less throughout the entirety of his stay at the club. Because of all the contributing factors and varying circumstances in his story, answering whether he was unequivocally in the wrong is a bit difficult. Actually, scratch that. If you're a Napoli fan, it's likely quite an easy question to answer. So I'll try to answer this from a balanced perspective. Did Iguain deserve better treatment overall? Yeah, I think he did. Particularly with regards to his time at Madrid, Juventus and with Argentina. He was playing some great football while at Madrid and was a reliable goalscorer while at Juventus. Let's not forget that he was coincidentally replaced by his former teammate Cristiano Ronaldo at Juve. I mean, it's kinda hard to compete with that. And as for the national side, I previously made a video on Argentina's historic 2021 Copa America win where I noted exactly what I'm about to say. Iguain played a large role in helping Argentina to the finals that they reached in the first place and should probably be given a bit more credit for that. Adding on to that, he was not the only player that dropped the ball for La Albi Celeste. Football is a team sport, remember? Now, don't get me wrong, does Iguain deserve the criticism? Absolutely yes. He missed arguably the most important chances of his career with Argentina three times in a row and probably could have handled his exit from Napoli a bit better. Continuously telling the fans that you're not going to move and then up and leaving to one of their biggest rivals? That's not the move, my guy. Of course he was entitled to make the switch to Turin, but considering the fact that Napoli are quite possibly the only European club that has ever truly loved him, makes this decision look so much worse. He wasn't perfect, but I also don't think he's a villain. And there we have it. What do you guys all think of Gonzalo Higuain? Do you think he deserved all the abuse? Feel free to comment all your thoughts below, let me know how you feel, I do reply, so go on. Anyway, hope you're all smashing it and have an incredible day further. Cheers, and I'll catch you in the next one.